Tonight in our Two Americas series, The Fight for Water, Colorado's population boom brings with it a growing thirst from cities along the Front Range. A new water development proposal is looking to tap an aquifer in the San Luis Valley to help supply some of that need. But as News 5's Andy Cohen reports, the methods involved in bringing that water to the Front Range can harm rural communities. The water that flows in the Rio Grande River is the same water that irrigates farms and provides habitat for local wildlife. Water connects everyone in Colorado. When you touch water, you touch everyone. Water here comes from the same place, melting snow on the mountain ranges that border the valley. It feeds from the rim, the rim being the San Juan Mountains on one side and the San de Cristos on the other. There's been less snow in the mountains in recent years, reducing the flow of surface water into streams and rivers and recharging the aquifers below the valley at a slower pace. And we just don't have enough water here. We're very, 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 very limited on the water. So when a water developer recently made presentations like this around the valley. The Renewable Water Resources Project has found a solution. The valley sits on top of one of the largest aquifers in North America, one billion acre feet of water that is completely renewable. Many were skeptical. And the board politely said no, <laughs> and we will challenge you every step of the way. It is the official position of the board of the San Luis Valley Water Conservancy District, and me personally, that, that this project is bad for the valley, and we oppose it. And that's putting it mildly. But I'll tell you, it'll be over my dead body that they take this water out of here. The valley's groundwater system is made up of two aquifers, a shallow aquifer that's been tapped with wells for crop irrigation for many years. Below that lies the deeper confined aquifer, which the developer believes holds a billion acre feet. For perspective, that amount of water is more than double the volume of Lake Erie, and it's also highly disputed. Uh, it was a rough estimation uh, by uh, Dr. Emery, about two billion acre feet being available. And it's interesting how bad information, if it hangs around long enough, it, it somehow people seem to think that there's some truth in it. Phil Emery testified in one of previous export cases that that number was a back of the napkin estimate. Renewable Water Resources proposes to transfer 22,000 acre feet of water per year out of the valley. It would be drawn from the deep aquifer and pumped through a trans mountain diversion into the South Platte Basin. If we access a small portion of the billion acre foot aquifer 2,000 feet below the surface, we can begin to heal the surface water and the shallow aquifer that's been tapped for generations. Developers who want to export water are legally required to return an equal amount into groundwater storage. RWR plans to do this by paying interested farm and ranch owners to retire some 31,000 acre feet of existing water rights, permanently drying them. By taking 22,000 acre feet out of, out of the ground, the proponents would have to dry up an, an amount of existing agriculture to get that water and have that water available. And so that would be a huge hit to our economy and our communities and our schools. It's devastating. I mean, if we start doing that and pumping this valley dry, we're done. I mean, our economy's gone. There, no, there won't be nothing left. In fact, many farms and ranches in the valley are already making self-imposed cuts in irrigation to try and prevent further depletion of the shallow aquifer. We started this in 2012. From 2012 to 2017, we were making good progress, and we have a target that we're trying to recover this aquifer to. A severe drought in 2018 all but eliminated the savings they'd worked for. RWR is offering $50 million in a community fund to offset the losses from the dried farms. Even with that money, Alamosa City Government recently published an economic analysis that found the RWR proposal would be detrimental to every community in the valley. The state of Colorado, when they embraced the Colorado Water Plan, it specifically said um, to, to benefit one basin at the expense of another, that, that was not the approach. A decision on this proposal would come from Water Court. The developer would first file a claim to change the water use. There's a long history of legal fights against water export claims in the valley, and the districts here already have a small war chest thanks to court-awarded legal fees from the most recent failed export case. So we're prepared. We've seen this unfold before. And I, again, I'm very confident. I mean, the community is already galvanized together to some respect, but it's if and when they file an application, you'll, you'll see it even more. In the San Luis Valley, Andy Cohen, News 5.
News 5 made several offers for an on-camera interview with renewable water resources, which their spokesperson did not accept. In response to written questions, they noted that this project would retire more water than what is proposed for development benefiting the aquifer. They note that the water diversion would take pressure off of overused surface water supplies like the Colorado, Yampa, and Platte rivers by cities on the Front Range. Mike.